Today we're going to take a look at farming perspective. One of the biggest questions we get is from real estate agents is, how do I choose a farm area? What do I send them? This could be one of the most difficult yet simple principles to understand in real estate. So over the next five minutes, we're going to run through this so you have a great start on your farm area. Number one, let's talk about the benefits of farming. The best part about farming is you have the opportunity to control your price point. See, with farming, we can dictate what areas that we want to farm and make sure that there's going to be a return in those. See, if we're sending to areas with, with lower home value prices, then frankly, we're going to make less money. We can also narrow our geography. One of the complaints agents have is, boy, I'm just driving all over town. Or we can actually control our territory and how much driving we're doing. And therefore, just frankly, making more money, saving time not driving is just a better life. So here's the questions that are asked most often regarding farming. What is the best area to farm? How many homes do I start with in my farm? What do I send them? How much is it going to cost me? How long until I get a return or before I get a listing that's going to sell? And frankly, is there any way to make it happen faster? Is there any way for me to speed things up? So we're going to answer, answer these questions. The mistakes agents make. Number one area is they choose an area that's just too large. They start with, you know, hey, if 500 homes are good, then 1,000's got to be outstanding, and 2,000 is just even more money. But the reality is they, have to, they, they struggle to get the return on investment fast enough, and they run out of money before, they, before the return comes in, and they end up quitting their farm too soon. The next mistake they make is expecting results too soon. So they start sending to an area and after three, four, six months they haven't gotten anything back and they get frustrated and they stop mailing into the area. And there's the third one, quitting too soon. They just give up. How about this? What do I send? A lot of people when they're mailing out things they send confusing messages to their market area. They misunderstand what is it that they're trying to do. Are you trying to be a friend to everyone? Or are you looking for specific people who actually need your services? We go into this deeper on the video, Marketing Perspective. I suggest you take a look at that. The last is inconsistency in mailing. Meaning, you send out a letter at, at the first of the year, maybe another one on the 4th of July, and then you forget to send anything until the holidays and then you send something um, regarding Thanksgiving or the holiday season and the consumer just doesn't even really know who you are. There's no top of mind awareness. They don't see you as a professional. They just are, you're just somebody who occasionally sends them a letter. In choosing the farm area, first we have to decide is what is our demographics? What I recommend is starting with medium to high price points. So don't pick an area that's in the lower end of the market. The challenge with this is your return is going to be too low. And let's face it, there's the old saying is you get what you ask for. If you ask for low end business, you're going to get low end business. Number two is look for neighborhoods with greater than or at least as close to 10% of the homes sell each year. So in the last 12 months, has 10% of the homes sold. So an example, if you have 500 homes total in an area, we're looking, for tw we're looking for 50 homes that have sold in the past 12 months. We typically find this in homes that are less than 20 years old. If they're 10 to 15 years old, that's ideal. What we're looking for is first-time homeowners, people that purchase the home new. If the homes are 1,200 to 1,700 square foot, three bed, two bath, two car garage, and they bought the home new, they likely didn't have children when they bought the house or had very young children. And now the, the family is outgrowing the homes and they need to move up to a house that's more suitable for teenage children. If the homes are 3,500 to 5,000 square feet, four bed, three bath, three car garage, 
and let's say they're 15 to 20 years old, you're likely dealing with people here that are empty nesters. They no longer have adult children living at home. Their kids have grown up, gone to college, graduated college, and are likely getting married now. Therefore, there's two people in a house that's suitable for five or six, and they no longer need that size, and they're looking to downsize. So let's start with a neighborhood. What I recommend you do now is maybe pause the video, search a neighborhood that you're interested in, and look for those demographics that we described earlier. A 10% home sold rate in an area. Now, one of the mistakes people make is they'll search an entire neighborhood. This is a great example of a neighborhood where there's 1,800 homes in this area. And like I shared earlier, when you try to market to 1,800 homes, the cost of marketing is too high for most real estate brokers at first. And therefore, they, they tend to mail out two or three or four pieces. And then because the cost is too high, they give up too soon before the, they built top of mind in the consumer's mind and therefore get zero return on their money and lose 100% of their money on this endeavor. Instead of taking the entire neighborhood of 1,800 homes, pick a smaller area of about 500 homes to start. So search by sub areas. In this example, I took two different sub areas. One's called the links and the other's called the fairways. So here you see if I combine these two areas, it comes to 550 homes total. On this next example, you can see that there were approximately 50 homes that have sold in this area over the past 12 months. So this is an ideal neighborhood for us to target. So what is my message? Again, see the video marketing perspective to better understand how you can create a message. Also, these two templates are available on the Google Drive for you to access and modify if you'd like to use these templates for your marketing. What's the most important in here is that we communicate to the consumer visually what business that we're in, that we're in real estate. And we visually communicate that by the picture of the home. The next thing that we need to visually communicate to them is that we're successful. By communicating that we're successful, they know that when they need our services, that we're someone that they can rely on. So in this example, we're showing pictures of homes that have just sold. Now other information that's important is, how much did we sell them for and in how long? How long did it take us? The last piece that's important on this is that you have a photo or an image that you use for yourself consistently because that's the brand in the consumer's mind. For most real estate brokers, their brand is their image of themselves. That's the most important piece. First off, with mailers, we want to be able to print these at a low cost because if we can keep cost low, then we can maintain longevity in our marketing and when we decide to increase either frequency or territory size, we can do that without damaging our budget. So number one is reach out to your title company, your mortgage company, and your vendors to find a discounted printing solution. So for example, if they're printing 5,000 pieces a month and we need to add an additional 500 pieces to that, we're going to get their discounted rate in order to do that. So reach out to those people first to find out if you can get discounted printing to save you some money. Every penny counts here. You can also find additional discounted printing on vistaprint.com, colorcardsdirect, or expresscopy.com. And there's also a website called Reamark that also offers a discounted printing service with templates already directed to real estate brokers. Now let's talk about co-marketing. Co-marketing is by co-branding with a mortgage company or a title company. In order to be RESPA compliant, they need to market on 50% of the marketing material also. Therefore, by being on 50% of the marketing material, they also get to share in 50% of not only the printing cost, but the mailing cost. And this will dramatically save us money over the long term. So we agree with co-branding with mortgage and title.
So let's talk about reducing our mailing costs. The most effective way to reduce mailing costs is using a solution through the United States Postal Service called Every Door Direct. Every Door Direct is actually delivers not via address, but by postal route. So instead of having an address on each one, we deliver them to the post office and they put them in each door as the postman is going door to door. And this reduces the cost to about 17 cents each mailer. So here's an example of an every door direct search on the US Postal website. As you can see, this lines in with the same neighborhood that I had. Now, you may need to modify your farm area to incorporate the every door direct route because it may not be exactly with your farm area. As you can see here, there's 546 homes and it costs $95.55 or 17.5 cents each home in order to market to them. This is a great savings over stamps or even postcard costs of mailing. So let's look at our return of investment. If we look at 500 homes and it costs us 47 cents to print a two-sided, high-gloss, beautiful postcard, and we're mailing it every door direct at 17 cents, so that would be $85, our total cost would be $320. Next, we need to factor in our co-marketing. So if we're co-marketing and we're sharing half the cost with, say, a mortgage company, that reduce our total monthly cost to $160 and our total yearly cost to $1,920 a year. Now, what is our return that first year? Go into this with the expectation that your first year you're going to get no return. Maybe not even one phone call your first year because you have not become top of mind yet. We are simply marketing to the area we have not gone into prospecting yet. We're just mailing, and it, just by mailing, your first year return is likely going to be zero. Farming is more like an investment where you need to wait for, a rate for your return over a long period of time, and that, that return compounds year over year, as you can see in the next graph. Here you can see within our first 18 months, we sold one unit. Our average commission was $6,000. Our cost over that 18 months was $2,880, and our return on investment was $3,120, or 62%. Now, we know that the cost of sales and the cost of operating our real estate business, even after 18 months, we probably still lost a little bit of money. But after year two, We've invested $3,840 into marketing in that area. We sold two units for a total commission of $12,000. Our return on investment was $8,160, or 312%. We're doing much better. Next is our four-year return. Over four years, our total cost cost us $7,680, our commission income was $36,000, and our return on investment was 469%, or $28,320. Now we're beginning to get some traction in our farm. So here's the principles of marketing that's important to remember. Number one, consistency. Attempt to get it out on the same day every single month. These must go out. 12 times a year on the same time. I suggest putting it, dropping it off at the post office the same day each month to ensure that the consistency of marketing is there. Next most important principle is frequency, which means once a month, minimum, minimum once a month. And when you begin to get listings in the area, increase frequency before growing the territory. So we talk about this being, in, being like farming or growing trees. Imagine that over this time you've planted a tree and you've grown it and you're finally getting fruit from the tree. And as soon as you start getting fruit from the tree, you run out and plant another tree. 
See, what we want to do is spend more time on the tree to figure out if we can get more fruit from that same tree before we go plant another one. So we want to increase frequency mailing every other week. Now, if the tree begins to slow down and not produce fruit, or the market, if the real estate market begins to slow down, then decrease back down to once a month but do not decrease less than once a month in frequency to maintain top of mind awareness with that area. The last piece is quality. Print quality and layout quality is, is important, but it's not nearly as important as getting the message out. I know many real estate brokers around the country who are massively successful with farming with very, very basic marketing efforts. What I recommend is get the message out first, worry about quality, typesetting second. The last piece is how do you increase your return? To increase your return in your farm area, I suggest doing some prospecting into the area. That means getting out there and getting face to face or over the phone with them to begin having conversations. You can also work up by becoming the community expert, by being a community resource, by staging events, or by coming from contribution and hosting charity events, or maybe a food drive or a clothing drive in the area. And they see you not only as the neighborhood expert, but someone who cares about things greater that also impact the neighborhood. And the last piece, is as you're doing open houses, be sure to do open houses inside your farm area, even if the listings aren't yours. Ask your other real estate brokers if you can hold their house open and be the one with the most real estate signs in your farm area. This will speed up the process. You're gonna learn more about this on our video, Fast Farming, where you will learn how to increase revenue streams within an area by not only marketing, but by prospecting. In everything we do, we challenge ourselves to exceed expectations. And this is just another example of how we show up as STEPS agents. Be great out there and create wow in your world.